Hello and welcome again to another episode of One Starfish, where our mission is to change the world one starfish or one person at a time. As always, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, share, all the good stuff. That's how we get the word out. Um, I'm excited for our guest today, Sarah Ray. We met at an event a little bit ago and her and her husband, they own the point, they own the park cool sounding names in a small town in Alberta called Okotoks. For those of you in Alberta, you know where that is. For those of you who know, you don't. Um, but uh, incredible story, what she's doing with especially the point. I don't know as much about the park, but we're going to get into that. So welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So let's dig in um, to yeah. kind of what made you start the point and, and tell us a little bit of, first of all, because I mean, listeners have no clue what this means. Uh, so tell us mm -hmm. kind of the mission of the point and then where did that come from? Mm -hmm. So the point essentially um, was created. Um, I can go on the backstory after, but was created for a place for our youth to come and reconnect again. It's been a really challenging, you know, two, three years now. And, you know, speaking with different psychologists, different professors, different um, teachers and parents, um, you know, you really got to know and understand the mental health and the well-being of our youth and having owned the park which is geared towards zero to seven um, and seeing kind of after that seven mark there in okotoks particularly there isn't necessarily a safe haven we do have our rec center we do have different facilities but um just a, a place for kids to be kids again and you know to play and to offer a space and a facility for professionals to come and shine their light and to be able to offer their services so you know it was it, it it's a place of community connection um you know which is created here through a drop-in through different events so um wide variety here but it's a place for a community so yeah that's really yeah. awesome i love it what what yeah. got you what started the park what started the point where did that all come from so I'm going to try and brief synopsis it, um, <laughs> way back, you know, when I, yeah, when I, when I was younger and I ended up, um, going back to university as a mature student and getting an honors degree and doing well, and, you know, thinking if I can do this, anybody can do it. You know, if, if you can kind of follow your dreams and succeed through things that you never thought you could accomplish, anybody could do it. So, um, you know, I, I followed that path. I got married two beautiful young children, um, moved to Alberta where my family was. And unfortunately, when my kids, and I'm going to try not tear up because I've been really good about it. When my kids were aged one and three, um, their da dad died suddenly in a car accident. Um, so it, it really, you hit a roadblock. You hit a point in your life where, you know, you feel like I've got this great life. I have the, the million dollar family. I've got a husband and a son and a daughter and we're doing well and we have plans and whoosh, you're just throwing, you know, throwing a loop. So, um, within the first couple of weeks, maybe a couple months of, of that tragedy in my head, I kept thinking five years, like I'm going to focus on my children and myself and my well being and healing and growing through this. Um, in, in that whole mix, we had a lot of other tragedies within our family. So it was a, it was a pretty intense moment. Um, and then soon after my stepfather almost passed and then soon after my father actually passed. So, you know, this kind of cycle of tragedy, which is easy to fall in that victim mentality. Oh, why me? Why me? And um, I don't believe that. I believe that things happen to you, maybe not for a reason, but you can look at it as as a life lesson. And I wanted to leave a legacy. I wanted to give a space and an opportunity for other people to see that and to then instill that into our future generation. So I worked my butt off, like worked my butt off on my own self-development to find that belief and truth within myself so, so then I can shine my light on others to see that within themselves. So the park started, um, it opened with a bang. It was awesome. The community embraced it. Um, the, the little children loved it, the programs. And then four months after we opened the park, then the world shut down, <laughs> you know, so then you kind of go through that process and you learn a lot and I've, I don't regret anything. Um, and every kind of downfall I've, I've risen back up further. And, and I think no matter who you are and what you've gone through, 
you can rise above, you know, and that's what I want people to know through the businesses, mm -hmm. I think. So oh, the, the, the point started after the pandemic started slowing down a little bit and seeing, like I had said earlier, that, you know, effect that it had on that older kind of generation of our youth and boom, I mean, not boom. I mean, it took months, <laughs> months. <laughs> boom, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I love it. it. Yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit of how you, um, I believe things happen for us, not to us, you know, that, that common question of, um, I just listened to something the other day and it just hit me, you know, we say like, yeah, the why me, um, why not you, you know, God gives us stuff we can handle. And if we can't handle it, we're not giving it. So, um, but in those moments, you know, when, when you were coming out of a really tragic time, a really hard time, you said you got really into personal, personal development to grow your confidence and to grow yourself. What got you into that? Like what started to tip that? What would you remember a deciding moment or anything like that? That was like, you know, instead of going into like, you know, why me, you know, crying in the corner, which by the way, nothing wrong with crying in the corner. Sometimes I'm not saying that, but that yeah, kind of like quitting, itself. quitting on life, yeah. basically yourself, instead mm -hmm. of picking yourself up and saying, how can I help others? Mm -hmm. Do you know what kind of influenced that? Was it someone, something said or like anything like that? So I think, I think I've actually, I've been blessed with that. I've always had it. I've always thought, how can I do better for, for the world and for myself? Um, I did grow up in a, a Christian family and there's a lot of, you know, serving in that piece. And I did notice through my process and through my journey, I would always feel better when I would help somebody else and not like, oh, your sad story is way worse than mine. So I feel better about myself. <laughs> yes, that's, you know, a cliche that we can use, but really by helping people and serving people, you heal yourself from within. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same concept, you know, with teaching, you learn more by teaching something than you do by learning it. So it's that same sort of that, that thing. So the more, you know, I would either help or I would help myself, same thing, the better I would get. And whether that was reading a book for comfort and healing and understanding and taking that piece from it, um, or it was listening to a podcast or a documentary or something, it would just bring you up just a little bit more each time. Um, and, and I think one of the big things too, is when you're, you're in a dark space, it's, I, it was hard, but to quiet your mind and to quiet, you know, your soul. And then that, that little inner voice, that little intuition is telling you, I believe that I, I believe in angels. Cause I have angels. I have goosebumps just thinking about it, you know? So there's something, whether you want to call it your intuition, whether you want to call it you know, an angel, however you want to look at it, but that quiet little voice, it's like, you can do it. You can do it. This was meant for you for a reason. So shutting out the world, you know, and allowing yourself to go within, to listen to that voice enough to be like, oh yeah, go, you know, I think that that's a big one, that inner voice. So. So you kind of always so had it a little things. bit and, and grew up in that, which is really cool. And then as you went mm -hmm. down that path, you know, um, what was something that helped strengthen you? I mean, beyond, obviously you do have beliefs and I think that's really powerful um, in a higher power, God, whatever people believe in. I think that's very it, essential. Whatever it is, power. it's all the same yeah. in the end. Yeah. 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 And then, but like, what did, were there certain things that you read? Was it associations? What were some of the things that led you into like entrepreneurship and then you know, starting your own businesses, I get obviously the purpose is to give back, but I mean, you could have volunteered for something I'm sure mm -hmm. instead or something like that. What, what caused the entrepreneur? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So two things that, that you kind of commented earlier, what was the thing that kind of got me going? My kids um, were my number one, you know, seeing them and, and my purpose, what I thought my purpose was in the world was to be a good mom. And I was going on the track of being a stinking good mom and things happened. Um, so to continue down that path of showing up every single day and some days it's harder than others. Um, but I, I think that, and then anything specific that, you know, was a, was a repeat the last part of the question. Cause I totally geared myself. Well, I'm just listening. I'm like, this is good. I don't know where you're going with this all, but I love yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically like what were some things that it helped you through that like was it associations you were really conscious of what what kind of took you from you know maybe working for someone or at the time being a stay-at-home mom yes. to entrepreneurship um in in that 
not being limited, I think is my big thing, not offer other people to achieve. So you can go and you can volunteer, um, but they have their structure. They have, you know, their, their policies or whatever that is in place. And to be able to work for yourself, my mind, the things that go through my mind of what I want to do and what I want to achieve, you can't do that in a traditional setting working for someone. So, you know, we run a preschool next door and I'm not a licensed preschool because I believe in teaching children about the social and emotional well-being. You know, so to have limitations, mm. you don't have limitations as an entrepreneur. It's your own creativity and your thought that it's your own limitations that you create. So I think that was my biggest thing. Um, and I've just had that entrepreneurial spirit. I've just, you know always wanted to do things on my own, whether that's selling vacuum cleaners door to door or <laughs> starting a little organizing company. Like I've always been able that that's, that was my natural progression. So I followed it. It was easy for me to follow that. So that's, yeah. that's really cool. And what, what kind of grounds you on the days, like you said, you don't feel like it. There's days I'm sure throughout all of this, since, you know, the time your husband, you know, ex-husband, Husband. Late husband, don't worry. It's anyway. okay. Everybody, there's no writer. Oh my God, no, no. don't worry. Um, yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. Since, you know, his tragic passing till now, and, you know, there are days you don't feel like it. What got you through some of those days beyond that? Like, what really drove you? You know, if, if someone's listening, because I think this is a big thing for a lot of people is like, I don't feel like it. I'm not up to it. I'm just not. Like, what got you through those days? I didn't have a lot, to be honest, of dark, dark days because I wouldn't allow myself to fall into that. However, getting outside um, and when you say what grounded yourself, I actually ground myself. So I take off my shoes and mm. barefoot to nature and I ground myself. The The earth provides water for us to drink, air for us to breathe, food for us to nourish our bodies. Why would it not also provide you with that strength and that inspiration and motivation to keep going? So nature and getting outside was a big one. So even if that was just walking to the mailbox for the mamas out there going through part, postpartum, the people going through anxiety and depression, get outside. You know, I go to the mountains and it quiets my mind. It's amazing. So getting outside in nature, um, is, is a big one. And, and I think just continuing to do the things that, you know, serve you because it's, it's easy to, to not do them and different chapters and different parts of your life right now, I'm in a completely different chapter. I went from waking up at five in the morning, having a cold shower, journaling, exercising, doing my gratitude practice. And I'll go back to that. But right now in the morning, I hold my children tight and I slow down in that moment. You know, and I bring those other pieces in different because right now with the busyness of running two businesses and my husband having a full-time career working five, six days a week, 12 hours a day, I need to connect with what is whole in my heart. And that's the love for my children and for myself. So, you know, do what, do what serves you and let go of what doesn't because there's so much that doesn't. So Find Tell us a things. little bit about where your life is now, because like you said, um, you guys all caught it. She's married again. He's an amazing guy. I got to meet him too. Um, he, he's my, he's my soulmate. I am. I, I truly believe that I'm supposed to have gone through this to have met him. He's my best friend. He's my biggest cheerleader. Um, I think he's super hot. I love him. I think he's funny. I think, you know what I mean? Like I'm super lucky. So in that regard, it it's right now I'm trying to continue to find harmony. People talk about finding a balance, you know, so does that mean you work eight hours at work? So you now need to compensate eight hours with your children? No, that's not how it works. Like to try and find that harmony of what works in your life that serves you. Um, and I'm going through a bit of a shift right now with, you know, him being back at work and both the businesses starting to get busier in the season and school and hockey and things. So um, I'm going through a bit of a transition phase where right now it's, it's re it's pretty hard financially. We're really seeing the repercussions of what the last two years has brought personally and for our business and trying to navigate through that, but to, to also to try new things. Like I'm taking courses um, financial courses because I'm like, no, the businesses are great. They're creative and they're what lovely, but to go and break down those cash flow sheets and the balancing books and doing all that 
Um, I'm, I'm learning about that myself to see things differently. So, you know, I'm completely taking a different path and educating myself in the business world because I can, I can create businesses, but to run them and keep them successful and to keep them growing is a whole different ball game. I just want to create them, sell them and create another one and create, <laughs> but I need to create success in them. And so that's, it's been hard, but I like hard, you know? Yeah. And have you always been that way? You say, I like hard. That is not what most people say. So has that been something that is like, if you go back to your childhood, has that been something you've kind of always been like, or did that just come because you went through some hard times and you learned to embrace the toughness? I think a bit of both. I like challenge and I like competition because the success of succeeding that, that challenge or overcoming that obstacle is so gratifying. It's so gratifying. So, you know, when a challenge is presented in front of you, you know, you choose your hard. Are you going to choose to quit because that's hard? Or are you going to choose your hard and working through and succeeding? You know, if you're overweight, not feeling great, that's hard, but to get in shape, that's hard. So I think, you know, having, having that piece and understanding I've, I've always not chosen the, the better hard. I don't say that, but um, the more positive, I've always been an optimist, you know, almost to a fault. It's, it's exhausting for people sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do this and we can better yourself that way. And some people continue coming to me and some people are like, no, no, just you do you. That's good for you, but that's not going to work for me. I drowned in my sore. I can't. Yeah. So is yeah. that something you found is that as you went through some of these transitions, there was people in your life that, um, let's say you had a distance from Mm -hmm. Um, I call it a friend shift, <laughs> friendship, you know, there's like friendships, and there's friendships. Yeah. Um, and I love every person who has come into my life and I am grateful for them for that reason. Um, but I've definitely had to narrow, you know, where I'm at and who I, you know, spend my time and energy on invest in people who invest in you and, you know, keep the ones who are your cheerleaders and who help you through and that you can help. Like I said, I gain more out of helping other people than I do myself. And through this journey of becoming an entrepreneur and starting, you know, storefront businesses and all the time and money and energy that goes into them, I didn't have a ton of support from my, my close network that I thought I would. And, uh, and, and it was challenging, you know, I think, your family and your close friends worry about you failing and failure isn't an option, even if it doesn't succeed and it fails that in itself is a success, right? You can't, you fail nine times and then that 10th time you've succeeded. So is it really failure in that way? You know, but I think that piece of what people worry about and you're a young widowed mom and you know, you've found this lovely man that can, you know, take on this, but they're still worried about you, you know? So that piece has been, challenging to kind of lay out the boundaries and understand this is this is my life this is my choice these are my children you know this is my business my finances like thank you however if if this is the choice i'm going to make support it or don't be a part of it kind of thing i mean maybe that's harsh but <laughs> you know there's some truth to that too when you get into entrepreneurial you know the world of that so yeah that's yeah. cool. And then have you, so you, I know you read a lot. So tell us a little bit about like uh, a daily routine. I know you said you get up in the morning. Now you hold your kids no more cold showers mm -hmm. um, at the moment anyway, but totally. like, do you, do you read every day? Tell us a little bit about reading. I know you listen to audio uh, podcasts and stuff like that. So yeah. when I say read, I'm kind of cheating because I audio book. Because I am, I do have two young children and I've got one with two broken arms. So I'm back to bathing like I to sit down and read a book I will at night once in a while um but it's more the audiobook when you're on the go or when you're cleaning or when you're you know getting ready so that that piece but but my daily routine it shifts so much depending on the chapter of my life and where that is um you know getting up early and getting out for a walk and doing something for sure to start your day being ready before your children get up is is crucial and preparing the night before to set yourself up for success the next day mm -hmm. in whatever that is writing down a brain dump or making lunches or having things done so you're not waking up in chaos I think is mm -hmm. is a big one but I went from very 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 structured to a little bit more laissez-faire right now so again it, it's 
it and depends and give yourself grace and be mm-hmm. kind to yourself if you're not doing all the things that you know you can do or you should be doing because I'm super hard on myself mm-hmm. and I should be doing way more is what I feel like and then I think stop just do this get really good at this mm-hmm. and then add you know so good. there's not enough time in a day to do all the things <laughs> yeah not shooting all over yourself or whatever the saying is yeah totally. Yeah. yeah, you gotta love yourself. That's awesome. So I think this is this is amazing. This is um, yeah, this lady's amazing. I'm learning your story, Sarah. It's so cool. So three final questions before I wrap up, and then anything you would want to leave our listeners with. First one is, you know, someone's looking for their purpose. Everyone always wants to find their purpose. What's one sentence that you would say that could help them find it? There's gonna be commas. <laughs> no, okay. I, like I think run on sentence. Um, run on sentence. Paragraph. Um, quiet your mind, go within your heart and follow that small voice within yourself. Um, that, that small voice that we don't necessarily listen to is going to lead you into a path that is going to help you find your purpose and don't compare yourself to other people. Social media has been poison for that. And to compare yourself to other people of what you should be doing or what, oh, that looks really fun. I want to do that. But but do you? You know, I'm going through that cycle even myself. So don't compare yourself to other people and and really quiet your mind and, and fall into your heart. Love that. Um, number two, and I'm sure there's more than one, but what's your favorite quote and why? So my favorite quote has always been... Um, be the change you want to see in the world by Dalai Lama. Um, I love that. And I think that's what you're doing. So I don't know if other people on podcast do, but I just like to recognize you for a moment and I see you and I appreciate you. And I am so grateful for people like you doing things um, because you're part of the change and that's lovely. My favorite quote at the moment, and I could get it wrong and I don't know if it's a quote by somebody, but I read it and it resonated with me is, Um, In religion, they call it spirit. In uh, science, they call it energy. And on the street, they call it a vibe. Whatever you call it, listen to it. So I really like that too. I like that. That's really awesome. Both of those. And thank you. Um, Number three is what's one word or sentence you want on your gravestone? Um, Always saw the light in others. Always saw the light in others. I love that. That's so cool. Uh, Wrapping up, if someone listened to this, they're like, hey, you know, I, um, you know, that was really good. That was really good stuff. You know, I'm, I'm dealing with a bunch of stuff in, in my own world. Was there something that maybe we didn't touch on today that would possibly help them? Again, I'm going to get a, a little bit deep, but um, these are all just human experiences, you know, so we can make them as big or as small as we want. And you've got this, you've everything that you need, you have within you find that you can do that. Um, because, because I've seen so many lives lost and you you really reflect on how precious and fragile it is. I don't want to say don't waste it because I don't think anybody's wasting it, but everything that you need, you have within. And, you know, when, when all is said and done, (laughs) um, you know, when you get to the end of your life and you look back, I'm turning 40 this year. And it's actually, I thought, I thought I'd be excited, but I'm like, I don't feel 40. I don't think I look 40. I still dress like a teenager half the time. I did dress up for you today, Angela, like an adult, but, um, (laughs) you know, I, I think just even reflecting at 40, looking back, I feel like I should be further ahead. And then I stop myself. I'm like, get out of your ego. Those are all thoughts. Like you've done well, go back and look at all the things you've done in your life, all the successes that you have had or the challenges that you have overcome or the grace that you have shown and give yourself a pat on the back, write them down, even if you want to throw them out and love yourself, you know, because then you can really share the love with other people. So I love that. I think that's it. Man. So good. Like I said, guys, make sure to reach out. We'll have all of the information or links and all that stuff in the show notes. If you're anywhere near Okotoks, drop by the point. It's really cute. I've been there. (laughs) Cute, cute, cute area. Um, I love it. Thank you so much for being on. You You know, let's go out there. Let's change one life or one starfish at a time. And together, if we change one life at a time together, we can change the world. Thank you so much. Thank you.